worship your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawn. It's time to sing.
reach much deeper Hi guys, this is Pastor Simply, and I'm so glad to see all of you. I'm from SMCI Bohol, and right now, pastoring the Glow Point Calvary Church here in Bohol as well. And this afternoon, I want to share about unchangeable God in an ever-changing world, really the, the theme of this reunion. And this title is the longest title of a sermon that I ever had, but I do hope that this sermon will be um, short, right? Now, we will be looking at one verse uh, in the Bible uh, this afternoon, and that will be James 1, verse 17. So, um, I have it in the screen, but if you want to follow along in your electronic or printed Bibles, just go ahead. So, James 1, verse 17, um, James said, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. 
and he said he never changes or cast a shifting shadow now this may look like a simple uh, bible verse but you know we can learn something about um, chains and about our perspective um, to it now there was a story about a man who dialed a wrong number and got the following recording i am not available right now but i thank you for caring enough to call i am making some changes in my life please leave a message after the beep if i do not return your call you are one of the changes <laughs> this is a, a a a funny story but uh the reality is this the world is constantly changing um, externally and internally you have your own personal changes and we have universal changes as well and without a doubt the biggest change that happened recently is um, the, the existence of this COVID-19 pandemic before COVID-19 the world was already changed right we are in the digital uh, virtual internet era it, it changed a lot and then during this pandemic the world changed again suddenly it, it, it feels like it is a new world and i'm surprised we have survived for more than a year already and after this pandemic guess what this world uh, will change again um, maybe we will go back to some normal things uh, maybe not maybe we'll we will enter a totally different uh, culture totally different age of our um world now um we all know that there are two types of changes right my positive chains and um the negative chains by the way to all our tagalog friends here um i'm not really sure if i can uh do it uh in my ad libs but i'll try okay um i'm a, I'm a visayan so usually i speak visayan in my explanations or ad lib but we'll, we'll we'll consider you so um yeah bear with me all right so there are two positive changes the negative changes in the world okay what i mean is even though naidu haka kinds of changes there are still more positive changes than negative changes in the world maybe right now you're so focused on the negative changes you know you're not yet married or you know you've lost your job or somebody's sick or uh, the church cannot meet in person maybe that's our focus but you know what there are more positive changes than negative changes for example because of uh, the online technology we can now reach more people right than uh, we we have or we can ever before we can now reach more people through social media and online evangelism uh, you can now give easier to the church even if you're not um, in your city even, even if you're working overseas online banking made it easier uh, because of transportation advancement um, we can now save time in, in traveling and you know people right now are still getting saved all over the world even though it is becoming uh, more sinful and and wicked so what i'm saying is we have more positive changes than negative changes i mean look at your life right now you're you're still alive you're still breathing you have food to eat you you get, you've got a family you have a church you have a ministry uh, these things are huge blessings huge uh a blessing from the lord uh, good changes that we are experiencing so uh let me just say that we have more positive changes than negative ones and why do we focus in the negative changes when we have more positive changes actually well it's because maybe we have a wrong uh, view of god or a wrong view of chains right so we have a wrong view of god or a wrong view of chains and if you're like me i tend to blow negative changes out of proportion in my heart and in my mind and maybe you're like that too uh for example if the wi-fi is uh, getting slow slow uh, you know, I, I will feel so frustrated without uh, thinking that others don't even have a Wi-Fi. You see, so we are so frustrated with with something that others actually want. So the point is, usually our perspective on negative changes is wrong, or we are overreacting. Um, some of the frustrations that that uh, we want to get rid of. Our lives are actually the blessings that others are waiting for. Some of us are frustrated with the changes of our life when we got married or when we have kids. You know, we cannot do things the, 
the usual. Now you have to consult someone when you make decisions and, and sometimes you get so frustrated. But hey, you know what? The thing that you're frustrated with right now are actually the things that people are praying for or are waiting for uh, right now. Uh, maybe you, you are so frustrated because your uh, source of income is affected or your income is reduced because of the pandemic. But others actually don't have a job right now. So you're still blessed that you have an income. Uh, maybe you're, you're thinking, you know what, this is crazy. I cannot meet uh, with the church in person every Sunday. This is so hard. Uh, in other parts of the globe, you know, persecutions are everywhere. And yes, they can meet, but they still meet in secret because that will mean they can lose their own lives. So, so you see, our frustrations right now are actually uh, the blessings that others are waiting for. And some of our frustrations are others' anticipations. I, I think that is helpful when we um, face chains, especially the negative ones, because, you know, it helps you when you have the right perspective. Some Christians in the present have a wrong perspective on the challenges that they are facing due to the changes around them. You see, see what do you mean? We, we often think that we are having a very difficult Christian life right now because of persecution, because of COVID and all the limitations. But you know what? If you will compare it to what other believers in the first century went through, this is actually not, nothing. I've heard a story about time-traveling pastors. And of course, this is not true. Uh, but one day, two pastors decided to switch time using a time machine. And the one from the present went to serve as a pastor in the first century church. And the one from the first century church went to serve as a pastor in the present time. And then after five years, uh, they met again. And then when, when they have met, the pastor who went to the past has become a mat mature and strong Christian and leader. But the pastor who went to the present became an immature and a weak pastor or a weak leader. And then they confronted each other um, after they saw each other. The pastor from the present told the one from the past, Hey, you said Christianity was normal in your time in the first century. I was almost stoned to death just for preaching. You didn't, told me. And then the one from the past said, Well, that's our normal. You know, That's what we face every single week. But wait. You said pastoring was difficult in the present time. All I did was preach in the front of a camera and then watch the worship service online and in my in air conditioned room and then while enjoying a cup of hot coffee. You said it's, it's, it's difficult. And then the pastor from the present said, well, that's, that's our difficult. So you see, from that story, we can, we can see that if we put things in perspective, um, it's helpful to realize that what we are going through right now is um, probably not the, the thing that we are thinking, okay? So when it comes to handling negative changes, perspective is very important. It is possible that what we are going through are not really what we think it is. Maybe we are blowing it out of proportion in our head. You know what? God is not absent. That's the lie that the enemy wants you to believe when you go through negative changes. You know, God doesn't care for you. He's not here. He's unconcerned. And this trial will destroy you. This, this problem will crush you spiritually. But no, God is not absent or unconcerned. And the trial is not meant to uh, destroy you. Now, James, the author of our uh, passage today, helped the struggling believers in the early believers to believe this concept that God is not absent, that God is not unconcerned, and that this trial um, is actually for God's glory. So James helped the struggling believers to believe this during the time of the early Christian uh, dispersion. Right. Uh, the book of James is probably the oldest book of the New Testament, written perhaps as early as AD 45 to AD 48. And at this time, the Jewish people were scattered all over the world because of the persecution that started in Jerusalem. And then during the Roman uh, rule, many Jews were also taken as slaves. 
and there were large Jewish populations in, in several different parts of the Roman Empire. Uh, there was a Christian presence among most Jewish communities throughout the world. And regarding the extent of the dispersion, the historian Josephus wrote, there is no city, no tribe, whether Greek or barbarian, in which Jewish law and Jewish customs have not taken root. So Christians were everywhere, but they were scattered. Once they were gathered, now they are scattered. Once they were comfortable, now they are at risk. And once they were rich, now some of them are poor, uh, some of them are serving as slaves. Does that sound familiar? You know, those, those things sound familiar to me. It feels like um, um, a little bit of what we are going through right now. I mean, th those was worse, but we, we also feel like this. We're scattered. Uh, we are at risk right now, and we are um, kind of like experiencing some sort of poverty. You know, throughout the book of James, James contended that faith produces authentic deeds. This is his main point, his big idea that faith, if you have faith, it will produce authentic deeds. And for James, faith was no abstract uh, proposition, but had effects in the real world. If you have faith, it should be obvious in your work. And then James offered numerous practical examples to illustrate his point. On the later chapters, he will talk about true believers calls on God for wisdom, not on the world. Uh, they bridle the tongue. They control uh, what they say. They set aside wickedness. They visit orphans and widows and does not play favorites. Now in James chapter 1, we see James illustrating his big idea about faith producing authentic deeds by saying that true believers endures in the midst of trials. Someone said we are either going in in the midst of or coming out of a trial. How about you guys? Where are you right now? Praise the Lord if you're coming out of trial. Uh, let's pray for those who are in the middle of one. And probably most of you are going in to a trial. This is just life. This is how uh, the Lord designed it. This is our world, you know. Trials are part of what is normal. So, James said, if you are a true believer, you will endure in the midst of a trial. And he gives this verse, James 1.17, uh, to give the believers uh, scattered and living in poverty and those who are um, oppressed the right perspective on God and the chains in the form of trials and temptations and how believers can handle it. So, how can believer handle it? Right, so I want to share two principles about change and about God. Number one, God allows chains to change you. God allows change to change you. And that's uh, in the first part of the verse. In FCMCI, we've learned that there are parts of the verse. That's why there, there's James 117a. When I, and when I first saw this, I was like, I don't see A okay, in my Bible. But that's just how people, you know, study the Bible. I've learned this in SMCI. So anyway, James 1.17. It says, whatever is good. He said, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from our Father. Right. Good and perfect is a gift. We are talking about chains. Why is it that there is a good and a perfect gift here? Now let me explain. There are countless times that God gave us pleasurable and needful things right like our salvation the holy spirit the bible the air we breathe i mean nothing compares to those to those things if you don't have salvation if you don't have the holy spirit if we don't have god's word if there's no air we are totally dead spiritually and physically but god has given those things they are good they are perfect for us uh how about the food that we eat um our wife and kids our church our friends our purpose a provision for a bill and a needed vacations these things are good and, and perfect for us and they are pleasurable and God gives this to us freely but those are not the only ones included in the package of a good and a perfect gift of God you say what what do you mean well if we will look at um, James 117 in context in the entire chapter of the first chapter here's what James 
are talking about before he went to verse 17. Verse 1 talks about the church being scattered. Right. They were scattered because of persecution. And they were scattered because people moved out. Uh, secondly, verse 2 talks about the presence of troubles. The verse 5 says there is a need for wisdom. But they're, they're confused. They don't know what to do. Verse 9 talks about the presence of poverty. Verse 10 talks about dealing with testings and temptations. And then verse 17 talks about good and perfect gift. So maybe... James is not only talking about the good and perfect gift that we know and we prefer. James is also talking about um, verse 1 uh, to 10, the things that he mentioned. Well, of course, based on the context, then those are part of what he's saying. You know, it's so um, amazing that God's word is so relevant that if James was written around AD 45, it's been like 1,976 years since then, this 2021 but it, it, it still sounds like he is talking to us directly or he is describing our present situation. Well, because God's word is eternal and it's for everyone in every time in history and even in the future. Now, man's view of what is good and perfect for us is quite different than God's. You see, that is why only people uh, views the changes that came as a result of COVID-19 situation as part of God's good and perfect gift for his children. You know, when we talk about good and perfect gift, uh, we, we're thinking about, you know, gift certificate in a salon or maybe for, for guys, it's like, you know, uh, cash to buy a new shoes or maybe it's a gift certificate for a spa. You know, those are kind of like the good and perfect gifts that, that are in our mind. But when, when God described it this way, he, does, he, he did not only mean those things. I'm not saying God does not give those things, okay? He does. Yeah, He does sometimes. Uh, but some, some of it are connected with what James is talking about before verse 17. So, again, only few people view the changes that COVID, COVID brought as something that is part of good and perfect. We don't see a good and perfect gift that way. But you know what? God does. And for him, any changes that will make us grow is good and perfect for us. Again, any changes that will make us grow is good and uh, perfect for us. People are concerned with what can make our life easier, right? But God the Father is concerned with what can make our faith stronger. You know, uh, when my kids are sick, I have two kids right now, uh, grade two and grade one, very young. And, you know, they got sick sometimes. And, you know, we have this medicine from the doctor or from the pharmacy. Their first question before taking the medicine is this, Daddy, what does the medicine taste like? That's their first question. You know, we know what it tastes like. So uh, I don't lie. I, I, I tell them, this is this is a, a, a grape grapes flavored medicine or orange flavored medicine, but you know what? It still tastes bad. Okay, it tastes bad. But then I say, but it's good for you. It tastes bad, but it's good for you. And so they they drink it, they take it, and um, usually they get well. Now, trials and testings brought by chains. Let's be honest. It tastes bad right you will be aching uh, you will be overthinking you will be at risk you will be nervous uh, you will be confused you will be wishing it will be over soon you will be afraid we will feel all kinds of emotions but it is good and perfect for you this is what james is saying here it is good and perfect for you because it came from god and it will change you to be like Christ. You will grow spiritually. Uh, Romans 8, 28, a famous verse. I don't hope you can connect this one to a new uh, thing about chains and about the trials and testings that we, we are experiencing. And we know that God causes everything. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that God is the source or the cause of everything. He's, he's the cause of covid uh, you lose your job because of God. No, that's not that's not what what he's saying. But 
what he's saying is God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. There are things that are not from God, okay? There are things that comes from our own sinfulness. There are things that uh, came from the enemy, okay? Uh, there are things that, that just, you know, came out of the not natural cycle of the sinful world. But then it says that God causes or uses everything. He causes everything to work together for the good, okay? Of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for you and me, for us, for them. And so we must not say again that God gave us COVID or God took away your job or God prevented the in-person gathering of the church. But we can say that He allowed it under His control because He saw that it can be good for us. It can test the faith and grow the endurance of his people now look at verse uh, 2 to 4 in james chapter 1 this is uh this will clearly explain it dear brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come your way we can say amen to that it's already here lord if it comes your way consider it an opportunity for great joy okay for you know that when your faith is tested what happens your endurance has a chance to grow this is god's goal this is god's agenda for you to grow so let it grow you've heard the song let it go let it go right <laughs> but james is saying you know let it grow so let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed you will be perfect and complete needing nothing you know when a baby is growing so i have two kids so i've experienced you know having two babies <laughs> when they're growing and his or her teeth are starting to come out this is uh, one of the most difficult season in parenting uh the baby is uh, always crying they are always sick they are always uncomfortable uh they cannot sleep well you're sleeping well and suddenly it's like 3 a 3 a.m you're you're baby wakes up and he or she is crying you don't know why nothing can make him stop and maybe it's because his gums or her gums are hurting uh they always have no appetite for eating again because the gums hurts when the teeth are coming out but when those teeth are finally out uh and in position and are almost complete you know what happened he or she will ask you for a crispy fried chicken all the time and sometimes they will even bite you i don't know why but maybe to test those teeth out you know let me test this um uh, in in daddy or mommy's arm <laughs> and then uh, you know what happens when all the teeth are there they become stronger and they're ready for fisting after going through pain so are you following god right now but you're still having a difficult time due to some changes have you prayed about it and they're still there? You're not alone. Paul prayed something like that. Jesus prayed something like that. If they're still there, may maybe because God is using them to grow your spiritual teeth and everything you need to live a stronger Christian life. God wants you to grow stronger, not live an easier life. Maybe that's what God um, is doing. And you know, how many of us here have grown because of this pandemic we have learned new skill you know we were forced to do online ministries and the church got it and now they're using it to preach the gospel to every people possible um we have we have found new opportunities to work or to earn income you have spent more time with your families you have spent more time with god and 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 with the church now you appreciate an in-person gathering <laughs> because you've tried not seeing each other every sunday for more than a year already and you you miss the the live singing so much uh you, you miss the fellowship after that and so uh you you now pray for the church more because you miss them and um right now in all over the world i think this pandemic is accomplishing something spiritually even beyond what we know or what we see so so you see um if we're having a difficult time maybe because god is growing you it's not that god is far or he doesn't care you know or these changes is trying to destroy you god is near 
God is with you and he's he wants you to grow spiritually he wants you to grow stronger um, if it draws you to God if something draws you to God like a big problem that is resulting you to pray right now um, you know a heartbreak maybe that is causing you to rethink your priorities uh, maybe you're experiencing problems right now in your workplaces and and somehow you remember your SMCI years maybe your friend betrayed you and, and you remember you know what SMCNs before uh, they were not like this maybe because you know God is using those things to draw you to him and if it draws you to God it is good for you okay even if it's painful even if it hurts it is good for you if it draws you to God Charles Spurgeon uh, said I have learned to kiss the wave that throws me against the rock of ages waves are coming changes are coming but we must learn how to navigate them and we must learn to embrace them as part of God's plan to grow you and if it uh, draws you to God it is actually good for you so chains uh, they're there God allows them to because he wants to change you secondly this is the last point God allows chains but he never changes okay, that's what we can see in the later part of the verse Whatever is good and perfect, now we understand that is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. How does God as the creator of all lights in heavens connects with changes, connects with uh, God not changing? Well, uh, let, let me explain. Uh, first of all, this speaks of God's immeasurable sovereign power. They said it took Thomas Edison um, 11,000 experiments. He failed 10,000 times and then finally he got it right. So 10 plus 1. Simple math. 11,000 experiments and a lot of days. I couldn't imagine how many days he did it uh, to have 11,000 experiments okay, to successfully create a tiny artificial light called the incandescent bulb. But here's what's amazing. It took God four words and a second, okay? Four words and a second. We don't really know because uh, time was not existent by, by the time. But let's just say it took God four words in one second only to create natural lights in massive sizes and numbers that cannot fit in our tiny and finite brain. He just said, let there be lights, and the universe was born. And the universe contains countless sources of light and heat and, and energy, and even the modern-day astronomy or science, they still cannot fully explain the universe's existence because God created them, and it reflects His immeasurable power. Now, if God the Father created and therefore controls light, then he can control life right that means there's no changes in your life right now that is outside his sovereign power that's comforting to know that even though your world is shaking it is shaking um, inside of god's powerful hand and we are secure and we are safe spiritually speaking now secondly this speaks of god's immutability or uh, God being unchanging or being unchangeable. Simply put, that God does not change his essence, attributes, or purposes. To state it another way, God's godness does not and cannot change. Okay? According to a Bible scholar named um, Dr. or sorry, D. Edmund Hebert, the ancient Greek for the biblical phrase is actually the father of the lights. Okay, the father of the lights. The specific lights that are mentioned here are the celestial bodies, the light of the sky, both day and night. The sun and the stars, we know that they never stop giving light even when we can't see them. Even in daytime, they're still there giving off light, giving off heat, you know, just releasing those energies, excuse me, just releasing all those, those energies. And they never stop giving light. That is why there is no shadow with God. You know, shadow happens when a light hits an object, right? And, you know, we, we produce shadows. But what happens if a light 
hits the father of lights uh there's no shadow that will be created because he is a bigger light than all the celestial light he is the father of lights in fact first john 1 5 says that god is the light and in him there's no darkness at all if you can create light then maybe you are the light right so there's no darkness at all uh, there's no uh, shadow with with god and so this means that god uh, doesn't stop giving or allowing what is good and perfect for us because he is good and because he is perfect uh, there's no shadow in him he is light so whatever he gives whatever he allows it is consistent with who he is he is perfect he is uh, good he is light and so if if the good god allows something because he does not change in his perfect goodness because he's still the same it will always be good and perfect for us even though it looks like it's bad but it is always good and perfect for us why because it comes from where it came from or it is allowed by a good and a perfect god that is unchanging now how do we relate to god's immutability uh, because it's easy to relate um, with god's love you know god love me that's easy to apply uh god's justice god will uh, take vengeance for me god will vindicate me uh god is um what else merciful so it's easy to be merciful um to others because of who god is god is your provider so you can trust him to provide for you but you know if god is unchanging how can we how do we relate to that how do we apply that to our life we, we can't we can't do that because men we always change change our mind every i think every second especially ladies you change your mind a lot uh, but how do we relate to god's being unchanging i found a text in the bible that will help us explain this in psalm 102 verse 25 to 28 it says long ago you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands they will perish but you will remain forever god is unchanging okay uh, they will wear out like old clothing you will change them like a garment and discard them but you are always the same you will live forever now here's the application verse uh, i think we are in verse 28 right so since god is unchanging since he will live forever since he will remain and he will discard everything here's what should be um, happening to us the children of your people will live in security it's security the children in his people will live in security that's what we need right now we need security the world is so uncertain but we can find security in the unchanging god and they notice their children's children will thrive in your presence so what this psalm is saying is that because god remains god is unchanging is all powerful we can find security in him and their uh you know uh the children of your people will live in security and their children's children will, will thrive in your presence that's a promise of spiritual security it's not gonna happen always physically but spiritually speaking we will be secure now um, there's a song called God is in control by a group called Avalon and you know there is a uh, a quote or a bridge and I wanna I wanna quote this they uh, the song says he has never let you down of course this is talking about God why start to worry now he's still the Lord of all we see and he's still the loving father watching over you and me that's security and he's watching over everything every little sparrow and every little thing so since god is unchanging then we can be safe we can be secured in him because he is watching over us he loves us he's good he's faithful he protects us and he will continue to do that you know, as we uh, need him here on on earth you know sometimes when I'm walking with uh, a group of people or sometimes with my family I don't always walk in front of them sometimes I like to walk um, at the back of them 
and the reason is because i want to see everything i want to see who's in their front i want to see what's on their left side i want to see what's on their right side and um, the reason is because i i want to protect them okay if something bad is happening on the uh, is about to happen on the left i can see it and i can prevent it if something bad is about to happen on the right side i can see it and i can prevent it from happening if something is in front of them that is you know not good i can warn them or i can just easily run in the front uh, to protect them so um you know i i want to watch over my family i want to watch over a group of people and, and god is like that he is watching over us and he did not change he was watching over us before and he will watch over us right now because he is unchanging and that's where we find our security we are secured in god's immutability you know as, as i close uh, do you do you remember the song um if christ in is is in my vessel i can smile on the storm I, i'm bad with action songs sorry okay uh but it says if christ is is in my vessel with christ in my vessel i can smile in the, in the storm how old are you when you realize that that is not true i mean <laughs> have you ever been in into a real storm or you know let's just say a storm of life have you ever been there yes right we all have been there um is it really that easy to smile does smiling solve everything well this is what the world will tell you right now ah, yeah, i'll get on a smile just smile and everything will be okay you know what that's not really true the disciples when jesus was in the boat they were not smiling in the middle of a storm they were afraid okay uh when jesus was crucified uh when he was in 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 agony in calvary or in the in the in the garden and he was suffering he was tortured um in calvary he was not smiling he was in the middle of a storm but he was not smiling you know what jesus did he was he became real uh he prayed that god do i really have to go through this and god said yes and he was so um jesus was in pain uh he sweat blood and that's a me medical condition for severe stress and god the father needed to send an angel to minister to christ maybe not only spiritually but even physically because his friends were asleep on his uh, most difficult night one of his most difficult night the friends chose to sleep than to fellowship with him so jesus became real he cried you know he he uh, he was in pain uh, he, he actually said lord why did you abandon me and so christ know what it means to suffer christ know what it means to go through a storm christ know what it means to go through a a negative change maybe more than what we know or what we experience christ suffered more christ experienced more but he didn't just say just smile everything will be okay no he said be real but trust the unchanging god trust the lord trust his word and you will have a spirit who will security you know what if you are in a storm of changes right now remember that god wants to change you and he is unchanging and god does not expect you to smile in the storm that, that's a comfort he doesn't expect you to smile in the storm what does god expect he expects you to grow in the storm he wants you to grow in the storm and yes we can grow why because he uses changes to change us and we are secure because he does not change i want to close with this quote from martin luther he said i'll trust in god's unchanging word till soul and body severe for though all things pass away his word shall stand forever and may the lord bless you may he grow you in the midst of the changes that is happening right now and remember we have an unchanging god the god of your smci years is still the god of your present years right now god bless all of you There's beauty in our 
Mr. Mike.